everybody. Another episode of uh, Alex and Panda Revisit Steven Universe. Today's episode is Season 1, Episode 8, Serious Steven. I'm a trans panda, currently fronting as Fallen, the fictive from Dungeon Meshi. And this is Alex. Hello, everyone. I can't help falling in love with you. Yay! <laughs> So, today's episode uh, sort of starts... Oh, darn, what is it? It starts on a, a specific flashback of Stephen the waking up... The teacups at Funland. The teacups at Funland. Stephen wakes up... Uh, I joke that it looked like he woke up from like a blackout drunk incident the, the night before. But yeah. regardless, uh, it immediately cuts to two weeks later when Steven and the Crystal Gems are going to go on a serious mission. I uh, need to emphasize the serious there. Uh, and actually, why was it so serious? I don't, I don't think they actually said why. They just said it, it was It wasn't serious. particularly serious. It was because Steven generally as a little baby doesn't take things very seriously. You know, I guess that's a good point. Uh, but yes, they make it to a, the Strawberry Fields, which is an old gem battlefield that has been completely overrun uh, by strawberry bushes. Uh, Actually, there's... Fallen, let me interrupt for a second. Okay. Um, I'm just going to very politely point this out. I think all of you should have this at the back of your minds. Steven is a child who... The I got serious a lot of implications things. of all of this uh, gem war stuff and gem stuff, the, all of that stuff is lost on him. And you should really yeah. keep this in mind because it's important context for the series moving forward. And I think this is one of the first episodes to really establish this. Okay, Paul, and you can continue with what you were talking about. Okay, I'll try to keep that at the back of our mind. But unfortunately, we got like 18 others back here too. So like, it's going to be a little <laughs> crowded. Uh, I... It's also funny the way you talk about Steven, because like every child his age we've known has been into like the YouTube lore cesspit. On... <laughs> it's like, this is the lore behind blah, blah, blah. But... but I, I want a protagonist who does that. Uh, my, our partner Dallas is sitting behind us. Would you like that, honey? Would you like a children's protagonist where they're like obsessed with figuring out like the lore of what happened in the past? I guess that's Dipper, actually, from Gravity Falls. <laughs> I guess that's Dipper. Maybe <laughs> potato skin. <laughs> okay, uh, anyway. Uh, so, uh, and what Alex is talking about with, uh, them is they go upon what appears to be some sort of triangular temple that Garnet has to open, where when they go into it, uh, it has some sort of mural in it, which seems to be depicting Rose Quartz and some other entity locked in some sort of combat. At the moment, it's just a mural and we're not fully sure, but it is something more to uh, comment on considering the lore, the lore, the lore. This is the first cameo of a very important set of characters who we will get to later. Yeah. Uh, but basically what happens from that point on is Steven accidentally touches a magical artifact and the temple sort of flips on its uh, head and everybody gets trapped into sort of a perilous booby trap temple scenario. And Pearl wants uh, to like keep Steven safe. Amethyst wants to mess around. Uh, but this is actually the first sort of Garnet focused experience I guess with Steven where she decides to bring Steven along um, and Steven is trying to be confident uh, but it's pretty clear that he's over his head he like whines about his, his he doesn't whine it's, it's more like his ukulele gets scruffed up a bit and when Garnet is like blocking death spike trap he's like oh my ukulele and goes to pick it up when he could die at any moment or second um and during that it's revealed that steven uh while he was on a teacup ride at uh what was it smile land again 
Or is it Funland? Funland. 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 Uh, he went onto the teacup ride. I did admittedly appreciate the sight gag of Pearl not understanding the teacup ride and bringing her own oh, teapot. Oh, that, that was good, yes. Yeah, I I thoroughly misunderstood the point of this ride. That That's... That, uh, that's again, that's funny. I, I like the, when the gems just functionally great against human culture without realizing it. Uh, but basically, Stephen got so, so, so super duper sick on the teacup ride uh, that he went, oh, I got to get off of here. And instead of like... I don't know. I don't know if it's because of his life as a gem, but he just jumps off. He just jumps out of the the teacup ride right then he's and there he's just a crazy little guy he he jumps off and he lands on uh the 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 park ride operator yes did you know i used to work in a theme park can you tell oh, yes that is true uh fallen here actually did used to work at a theme park and yes. for the sake of her privacy i am not going to mention which one it is that's fair. Not to mention, technically, I've gone to multiple. But regardless, uh, <laughs> uh, but yes, uh, he, Stephen basically just lands on the right operator. Se secondary point: right operator should not be that close to guess. Uh, I like I wasn't part of the right operation, but we can tell you for free that usually there's supposed to be some separation of at play. Uh, regardless. Steven lands on him and he makes the machine go haywire and it just like basically explodes and all the teacups fly everywhere doing lord knows how much damage to both people's spines and the park and uh, Mr. Smiley the upper the person operating the machine uh, decides to ban Steven for life right then and there honestly I don't really blame him because I would think throwing up would be my first alternative to jumping out of the spinning machine 40 feet in the air. Also, he's voiced by Sinbad. That's the only thing about him that's really noteworthy. Yeah. Unless I say the joke where Sinbad, well, it was certainly Sun God. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> The yeah, Sinbad like that. joke that Jill brought out during uh, the episode that's apparently from the Muppet Show. Yes, all all shows need a Statler and Waldorf to make it fifty percent more enjoyable. If Steven Universe had a Statler and Waldorf just at all times, I think everybody would have appreciated it better, don't you think, honey? You're right. You're right. Uh, but basically, holy crap! I agree with that. <laughs> Everything needs a Statler and Waldorf. Stat. Uh, during, Stephen was having a flashback when he was, he, he went onto like the deadliest trap yet and he immediately flashed back to when he messed up of the teacup rides. And it, it, when the flashback ends, Stephen like blinks and looks back and he's already passed all of it. And he says, we're already done. And Garner says, yeah, I just carried you all the way past it. Um, I'm not a hundred percent sure if it's funny. It's, it's so weird. I, I'll I'll get to talking about it later with how Garnet is. Well, in this episode. I think the joke is is that it would have been too much action for the budget to animate it. So instead, they went to a much less animation intensive um, sequence of them just at Funland because um, the animation required to do. Uh, that scene would have probably been a lot more. So it's a very smart like decision that they made. I they should get credit for that. Okay, no, no, you have a good point. That's a really good point, and I agree with you. Uh, so okay, so they get past that, and when they're done with that final trap, they walk back into the same space that they landed at the start of the episode, which means that they've gone into a circle and no progress has actually been made. And that's when Pearl and Amethyst come running, screaming in, saying that they've been doing this and like this is the only thing this temple does, is that they just keeps leading you over and over back towards the middle. Um, wow, this is going to be a pretty app meta analogy for this show. <laughs> uh, some bad. <laughs> anyway, uh, 
Uh, but uh, that is when Steven, thinking about the teacup rides, uh, he, he has like a brief moment where like he he like vents about the fact that like he's been trying to take this seriously because of how he messed it up. Uh, but then because he's been thinking about the teacup rides so much, he realizes that all of the rooms have been spinning endlessly as they've been stuck in this weird temple thing and uh garnet starts punching her way through and it's revealed that yeah it's just been going round in circles over and over again uh a bunch of like uh, a lot of pyramid and triangles to this temple by the way it's, it's like very direct in what it's doing uh and steven finds a gem powering the uh, circular motions pulls it out and the entire temple explodes right then and there um very short series, uh, Steven Universe. I'm very interested about how so many got, people got attached to it. Right, Alex? Rest in pizza pasta, Steven Universe. Yeah, so so sad. So sad. Uh, anyway, but every, everything's fine. They land in the strawberry fields. And uh, there is an admittedly really funny gag with Garnet where, like, instead of, like, popping up, like, the other gems, she just, like... She like, arises from her she, crypt like a like a hinge on a doorknob just like rises yeah like like Dracula or something she just rises <laughs> mechanically like a like a prop in a horror like dark ride or something that's just animatronic just launches off at the viewer or something oh my god it, it was it, a very it, funny animation sequence and it's it's just like a one to two second gag but it's it is genuinely really funny um and yeah that's steven's okay got the gem and i think we'll get into this but yeah get garnet gives him his ukulele which is still okay steven plays a little tune and then he immediately gets attacked by butterflies for being covered in strawberry jam and that's the end of the episode I'm certain that the Strawberry Fields are actually a reference to a Beatles song, Strawberry Fields Forever, which oh. is pretty cool. Oh, that's that's cool. That's neat. When, but also, when we were Strawberry watching... Fields will come back. Oh, yeah, okay, for sure. continue. Well, when we were seeing the Strawberry Fields, uh, it reminded us of our alter Cherish, because she always associates herself with uh, strawberries. Uh, there's not really much more to that thought. I just like strawberries, despite being diabetic. <laughs> uh, it's okay. It's uh, okay. But yes, this episode... It's interesting to talk about, because we were mentioning it during the episode, but Garnet is a very muted character compared to the others and like I can see aspects of her character and, and maybe Estelle needs to like grow into Garnet a little bit at this point but it's kind oh boy, of boy, we'll see how that statement ages yeah it's kind of clear that Pearl and Amethyst are the experienced voice actresses and Estelle is a little new to it or maybe the direction was a little unclear like we have uh our alter Xion is very like monotone and low-key but you've talked to Xion before right Alex yeah very analytical yeah like Garnet's not like an analytical low-key it's just low-key deadpan i'd call her deadpan deadpan that's the good way to put it she's a very deadpan character which absolutely can work you just have to do it you have to work to the strengths of the the voice actress and the character and stuff like that you know i don't think steven is a good match for the type of deadpan delivery that estelle is giving that's another good point yeah garnet tends to work better kind of like working as deadpan off of like either amethyst or pearl who are like two different flavors of eccentric and she kind of acts more as the straight man to their antics but steven is sort of the naive inexperienced foot but not the like sometimes that work can work but in other times the eccentric character probably contrasts the most with the the deadpan character it's funny because I think the character that works the best off of Steven is Pearl. Yeah, she does tend to work very well. Uh, 
probably because Stephen just keeps putting himself in danger, like in this episode again. Um, D.A. Think... Magano Hall does a good job with Pearl. It's too bad about the thing she did a little while ago. I... This is news, actually, to me. This is the first time... I've I'm... mentioned it before, but... Uh, oh. The oh. thing. Oh, right. Poop. Okay, well, that's unfortunate. Um, putting that aside, uh, I actually kind of don't know what else to say about this episode. It, it sort okay. of happened, and you might be able to put an insight. Because the it was the it was the first Garnet episode starring Garnet, but I kind of don't really see like her her strong suits in, like compared to like Pearl or I don't think Amethyst has had a, like an episode yet, but I can I can still see like Amethyst strong suits. Yeah, Garnet. Um... I think the problem with her is that they just never really gave her enough. And uh, that's all I can say for right now. We'll talk about we'll talk about her a little more actually at the end of the season when we get to those episodes because those will be like the prime time to actually discuss Garnet. Um, we already talked about the Strawberry Fields, the cameo of the very important characters, Sinbads. Um, in this episode, the war is starting to really be brought to the forefront of the show as meta text that you should be thinking about. And That's it's fair. so funny to me that when Steven Universe fans talk about the show, I never really see them acknowledge the war, despite the fact that it was always very openly about that. Yeah, like just like watching it in post. Um, it's kind of the most logical thing it's building to. It's It's been mentioned a number of times now. So uh, again, we've talked about it before, but we as in like me only got the Steven Universe like at the season finale. And that's like the point where like impossible to deny that something's happening, you know? It's... Pretty much. I mean, it's straight up Dragon Ball Z fanfic at that point, and Dragon Ball Z is about a very specific war. I guess that is fair, actually. I did not consider that before, but you are correct. Uh... Well, a lot of Steven Universe is inspired by Dragon Ball Z, as y'all mentioned in one of these episodes. Um, I, so, I yeah. don't feel that that's an offensive statement. If somebody takes offense to it, I'm very oh, sorry. Yeah. They got their inspiration from somewhere. <laughs> um, Heart heartbreaking. Inspiration comes from a place. <laughs> inspiration comes from a guy you probably don't want to be inspired by. Oops. <laughs> anyway. Uh... This is also the first episode where Steven organically solved something. Which is my last note. I guess that's fair. I'm trying to think of the other times. He he got, like, the closed gems, which I guess is technically... Well, but how did he do that? And I I almost think that there was, like... He was he kind of built up to this a little bit, but I can see where you're coming from, where, like... Like, so far, um... Steven solving something has been purely coincidental, but this is the first episode where he really figures something out. Like, it's starting to be implied that he's coming into form. I guess that's a good point. Yeah, this is the first time where, like, he was definitely drawing on something from the past, but it, it like, did take a genuine, like, logic deduction puzzle for him to do it versus putting a shard of gem in the pants and then putting the pants off which is <laughs> which is a type of solution but it's not a a, th a thought puzzler solution i guess is what we're saying right now <laughs> pretty much yeah okay well i'm glad we got that clarified um yeah i, I... I don't know if I have much else to say about this episode. I, I will I think that like the temple was drawn well. I think that like having a very specific shape motif helps distinguish it from like other like insert temple here from setting that appears in so many shows, you know? 
Yeah, and uh, quite frankly, as I've said before, we need to appreciate seasons one art, season one's art while we still have it. Oh yeah, like Strawberry Fields was it was very beautiful, and I don't know, it gave me really good feelings. Even the times that Stephen was attacked by butterflies. <laughs> all right, is is that all? Is we're, are we calling it here? Yeah, we think we're calling it. I I particularly don't have anything left uh, else to say. All right. Well, my name is Alex. You don't want my social media. I'm kind of a gigantic crab. Uh, and I'm Fallen, but you can find me at Transpanda on Tumblr. Okay. Good night, everybody. Good night, everybody. Thank you for existing. Bye. If I could begin to be half of what you think of me, I could do about anything. I could even learn how to love like you.